Hi, in this lecture I'm going to be covering systems of linear equations and more specifically how we can very efficiently represent them with the matrix vector multiplication AX equals B, where X is a vector and A and B, sorry, yeah, X is a vector, A is a matrix, and B is another vector. So, first of all, uh, what is a linear equation? Oh, and I guess there's a couple more preliminary things. This goes with chapter 2.2 from the deep learning textbook that this course kind of goes with. And uh, it's going to be pretty quick for two reasons. One, this should all be review, and two, just because this specific um, idea isn't used too much in machine learning, but it's definitely a good thing to understand. Okay, so where was I? Um, yeah, so first we'll start off with uh, linear equations. So linear equations, as you know, is any equation where there's no variables raised to any power greater than one. So an example would be 5x plus 6y plus 7z plus 3 equals 0. That's a linear equation right there because all three of your variables um, are simply raised to the power of 1. You're not going to see anything like that in a linear equation. And the reason is, is because let's take one of these variables off and just do something a little simpler like 5x plus 6y plus 3 equals 0. Um, from the grade school days we can recognize that this is uh, the equation for a line in general form. So that's going to plot something that looks like this. Um, this is a little more harder to visualize, but this gives the equation. So when we have one more variable here, this gives the equation for some plane in 3D space. So basically the intuition here and why we call them linear is because anything of this form with no higher uh, powers, so a first degree polynomial, um, is, gonna, is going to display something that is not curvy in its corresponding space. So in three dimensions, it's going to be a plane. In, um, in two dimensions, it's going to be a line. And in four dimensions, well, you can, uh, you can have fun imagining that. But anyway, so that's basically the intuition of a linear uh, equation. So a system of linear equations, as we've learned how to solve them in like middle school and high school, is simply just a lot of these uh, linear equations in a row so that you can, you know, let's just see an example. So 5x plus 3y plus 6z, and then let's move the, uh, the, the uh, uh, what's it called, the uh, scalar term, the non-variable term, uh, to the other side, 5, um, 3x minus 2y plus 7z, looks kind of like, there we go, uh, equals 21, and I'll say 4x minus 26y plus 3 z equals um, minus 48. You know, I just kind of made that up as I was going, but here we have some uh, system of linear equations, and the thing is that I made the equations up, so most likely we can't solve for x, y, and z, because they probably conflict with one another in certain ways. But just if we made the assumption that this was actually solvable for some value of x, y, and z, we would find that x, y, and z each had one possible, so there's only one possible setting for x, y, and z. So we could solve uh, for x, y, and z because we have three equations for three variables. So generally, if the equations are like reused, so if one of the equations is just, if this equation was actually just this times two, then we would really just have the same thing as two equations. But if we had three kind of independent equations and three variables, we should be able to solve for those three variables if they don't conflict in any way. So you've learned to solve systems of linear equations in um, middle school and high school just by substitution or um, substitution or uh, elimination. I won't really be talking about how to solve these, but that's not really the point of the lecture. The point is in how we can display these really nicely um, with matrix vector multiplication. So you know this can be a bit cumbersome to look at. So if there's any way that we can store it in a better uh, way, then that's welcomed, and we can't. So I'll kind of just show how it works, and then afterwards, uh, well, I'll show how to do it, and then I'll show how to work how it works afterwards. So let's just make the matrix vector multiplication. So we're looking for something that's ax equals b. So let's make that and let's make that a first. So that a is going to look like this. So we're just going to take the coefficients of each of the variables and put them in the corresponding rows of the matrix. So the first three here, five, three, and six, is going to be the first row of our matrix, 5, 3, 6, and then the second one, 3, negative 2, and 7, it's going to be our second row, 3, negative 2, and 7, and then our last row is going to be 4, negative 26, and 3, it's a bit close, 
Great, so we have a three by three matrix which kind of encodes all our coefficients and each of the rows here is a row is, our, is the coefficients for the uh, corresponding equation. Okay, so now let's just make an x vector and this x vector is simply just gonna be uh, the variables we have, so x, y, and z. And then finally, let's make this b, which is just gonna be the answers that we have on the right-hand side, the, um, uh, yeah, these, these numbers. 5, 21, negative 48. 5, 21, negative 48. So you'll see why this works in just a second. Uh, we just learned how to do matrix vector multiplication in the last lecture. So what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply this out and see what we get. So if we multiply this out, we're going to get um, this, you know, we're just doing dot products between this and this. So 5x, we're going to get something that looks like 5x and then 3y plus 3y uh, plus 6z. And then let's just go on to the next rows here. So 3y, 3x, and then minus 2y, and then 7z. And then the bottom row here, this and this now. So 4x, uh, negative 26y, and 3z. So this is our, you know, our dot products. So that's going to equal some vector. So this is really just a vector here. And then now we're just going to have this. 5, 21, and negative 48. And you'll notice here, if we get rid of these here, those two are identical. So really, it's just kind of a very compact way to uh, show these systems of linear equations. There's a ton more caveats and I actually talk about how to solve these in this matrix form uh, in a series of articles that I have after this it uses something called Gaussian elimination to kind of essentially do substitution, uh, essentially do elimination with these but do it in matrix form which makes it a lot, a lot easier to solve them. Um, but I won't really be covering that in the lecture because it doesn't matter too much. We just want to know that this is a way how we represent these linear equations in a really um, a really kind of pretty uh, format. Another, just one more thing, is that we don't actually really need this variable um, vector here because when we have three uh, rows, when we have a three by three matrix, we kind of assume that we have three variables. So we don't really need that uh, variable vector there. So if you want to be even more efficient, you can pretty much just completely um, kind of represent the system of equations just by having this a vector. So 3, negative 2, 7, 4, negative 26, 3, and this kind of putting a partition here, and then putting the 5, 21, 5, 21, and negative 48. So that's just kind of a very uh, quick and dirty way to show this linear equation. Okay, that will system of linear equations. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That's just kind of a way to express these things. There's a lot more technicalities and kind of um, really interesting and almost beautiful ideas that come with this display of linear equations uh, in this style, but assuming that you've taken a linear algebra course, you're either already familiar with those, um, or maybe you're a little dusty, but you don't know it, you don't need, really need to know the details too badly to understand machine learning, so um, I won't cover them here. Okay, see you in the next lecture.